So the quote that we're working with this week is all about uh, celebrating being on the way. Don't wait until you've reached your goal to be proud of yourself. Be proud of every step you take towards reaching that goal. Um, I'm sure for you there were a, a lot of steps on the way to becoming uh, a model. How did your career get started in the first place? Well, there was actually a local woman-owned business out in LA mm -hmm. uh, where I live, and she reached out to me via Instagram. She said, oh, I like your look. Um, you know, I think that you'd be great for my line. And so I went and I worked with her and it was, <laughs> I was nervous and I was scared and I never in a million years <laughs> thought I was gonna be a model. Um, but, you know, here I am today and I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, one of our users said something great and it, it occurred to me as well. She said, plus size model. That's like saying male model. Forget that, she's a fashion model. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's really hard um, in the industry we are very sep uh, separated. Uh, I think the term is, if you're a size zero to four, you're a straight model. Mm -hmm. And if you are b basically anything bigger than that, you're a plus model or curve model. It's like, why can't we just all be models? Right, you know, which is, why do we have to categorize each other? Which makes very little sense because the average woman and the average person is way, 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 way bigger. I mean, the average person is not wearing a four or a six or an eight, Absolutely by the way. Absolutely not. So that's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, how do you feel, okay, so you get the call and they, you know, hey, come be a model, and you're like, okay. Um, not only do you have to sort of get over your own body consciousness, everybody's sort of innate shyness about being put mm -hmm. out there in front of people, but there must have been a certain point where you realized you were being a role model of sorts. You were making a statement about self-love, yeah? Yes. Did, you, what, did you have that moment, and how, how do you feel about that? Um, I feel that every day. I feel that just being here today, being able to represent the people um, on the other side of the screen, you know, trying to make healthy choices in their life and trying to change their life. And I feel like as a plus model, um, I get to represent such a large group of women and men, um, just anyone who never fit the criteria to be a certain kind of person. And so I feel like this whole journey has just been really inspiring for me and seeing how other people are being moved by it. Um, you know, it's, it's very empowering to know that I'm representing such a group of people and, you know, it's a positive outlook on, you know, self-love and body positivity. So it's a great journey. How, so what is the role of fitness for you in your life? We t we'll talk a little bit about food mm -hmm. as well and good choices, but what about fitness? So I've always been typically like athletic. I played basketball, um, I did dance, all kinds of things growing up, but I was always bigger than the other kids or bigger than the people around me, and so I always felt like I was never gonna be good enough or um, I was always constantly getting judged because of my size. Mm. And even as an adult now, like I go to boot camps and I, um, you know, I go from one extreme to the next where I felt like, oh, I have to die, I have to lose all this weight. And then I go to this other side where I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm allowed to mess up. I'm allowed to be where I'm at, but I have to just love myself in the moment. Even if I've you know, fallen, I just gotta get back up and keep going. So fitness has really been a big part of my life and I wanna really encourage people to still love themselves, even if they're not at their best, knowing that they love themselves enough to work towards their best. Yeah, I, I love that and it's, it's a little bit tricky because I think we feel like if we're setting goals, we feel like you're saying, well, this is where I want to be, that we somehow have to not be happy with where we are. But it's learning to do both, right? It's exactly. learning to love who you are and where you are enough to give yourself the yes. challenge to be even better. Yes, stop making the excuses and just do it because you love yourself. Right. Not because you hate yourself, but because you love who you are. Yeah, we've said that before. Like, if you, your body is your partner in this journey, and if you don't love your body, how can you expect it to be an effective partner? You gotta, I mean, it's gotta start there. Has to start there. So. You seem so confident and so together uh, and so like you've got this dialed in. Um, but all of us are filled with self-doubt and all of us have challenges. What, what for you are the obstacles or the challenges along the way to where you're at now? Um, I think my biggest one grow growing up and now currently is I have a twin sister. Um, her name is Brianna. She's beautiful and I love her to death. And she's my twin sister. But we are completely opposite from head to toe. Um, and I always felt like I was being compared to her. She, it was never intentional, but just being a twin right. and growing up side by side with someone, um, I never looked like her. I never was a size zero. I was, I was always very curvy and vivacious and, and I was taller and um, it was really hard for me to really love myself and figure out who I was and accept myself. And it wasn't until this year when I started modeling to where I truly was just like, you know what? I'm curvy, this is me. Um, you know, I can lose weight, I can gain weight, but at the end of the day, I'm still myself, and I just have to love myself for who I am. Yeah. So that's really something I had to overcome. We, you know, we've said before, comparison of any kind is so corrosive and so unhealthy, yeah? Comparing yourself or being compared by others, and I would imagine with a twin, it's even more, it's, mm -hmm. it's even more present and in your face, day in and day out. Um, you started this Instagram account and hashtag that has been so important for so many people. Everybody deserves love. 
such a good message. What has been the response from people? Oh my gosh, the response has been incredible and I am just so glad that um, I get to share that with you guys here today. So it's basically um, like an organizational movement that I started that is really hoping to inspire people of all ages. Yeah, we did this photo shoot and we had ages five to 78 from all races, yeah, I know, it's crazy. All ages, all races, ethnicities, sexual preferences, um, people from all around the world came and you know, just to show each other that I feel like in this world today, um, you, there's so much pressure to be something that you're not and I really just wanted to start this to show people it's okay to be who you are, it's okay to accept yourself the way you are. Stretch marks, saggy skin, no muscles, too tall, too short, it doesn't matter. You are yourself and you're allowed to love yourself just as you are. I love that you had kids because really, you know, if you can teach that foundational message of loving yourself early on, mm -hmm. that's something that can carry them through life. And I think kids make better decisions about what they're going to be involved in if they love themselves, Absolutely. about who they're going to be around if they love themselves. You make better choices in partners because if you love yourself, then you demand that from the people that are going to be in your life. Absolutely. I love, I love that you start that young. It's so good. Uh, Chris Rich, I love this. I've exercised and eaten well for years and the scale never moves. It gets frustrating, but it encourages me to just think about the non-scale victories. Uh, and our lovely Jonas Cohen, uh, one of our class members says, I love this interview. You gotta just stop beating yourself up for where you're not and honor yourself for where you are. So, so true. true. <laughs> you, I mean, you are a huge inspiration for people. Who has inspired you? Um, you know, <laughs> the people that truly motivate me are my followers, people on Twitter, people on my YouTube, my YouTube channel, uh, people on my Instagram, all the messages that I get and the responses that I get from them. Um, that's really what inspires me. I, I want to keep this going and I want to push Everybody Deserves Love um, to new lengths because I want to show people that I hear them and I'm listening and I know the need for this is out there and I just want to keep um, you know, just encouraging people to love themselves for who they are because I know this journey for me has been so powerful. Yeah. And I really want um, to you know, inspire others to do the same. I love that. Um, uh, Lisa AG93 says, I love her. It took me so <laughs> long to accept that I am short and curvy, and this is a great message, and she is awesome. I love it! And you, you are girl. awesome, you, you are girl. awesome, because you, you just, you bring this really wonderful passion and this really wonderful self-love, and I feel like the best thing any of us can do is what you're doing, which is model the behavior and the, and the love of self that we hope others can achieve. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that, you were great, you were great. And thank, thank you for you so being much. here, for working out with us, and putting yourself that out there. That was great, and so thank you for everybody for watching, too, that was awesome. We love it, oh, this is the best tribe ever. <laughs>